welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've been here with my actual face, so I thought, you know, today's a better day than any, right? There are some things, mild conditions that can be treated at home, and I did want to go ahead and give you guys a video on how you can treat those illnesses. So mild fungal infections, um, mild bacterial infections, things like that. Um, perhaps, you know, ammonia burns from a crash, a tank cycle crashing, things like this. I am going to add a disclaimer on this video that I am not a vet. My videos, my content speaking to me should not be used as a substitute for seeing a vet. So if your animal is sick and, and needs medical attention, go see a vet. Don't, don't just watch this video. Don't try and reach out to me. Don't comment in my comment section. Go to the vet. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and jump to the video and I hope you guys enjoy and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So first off, I'm going to show you the stuff I like to keep on hand for treating my axolotls. First is Indian almond leaf. Uh, the second thing I like to keep on hand is 100% black tea. It needs to be 100% black tea, organic if you can find it. Uh, the next thing is aquarium salt. Um, and then the two products I like to use to treat fungal infections and bacterial things is methylene blue. And I'm going to follow that up with some Fioranto. You can also use Canaplex, uh, but I usually just have Fioranto on hand, so that's what I use. For today's demonstration, we are going to be using this little plastic axolotl in this tiny tub, um, mainly because fortunately, all of my axolotls are healthy right now. None of them are needing to be treated for any fungal or bacterial infections or constipation or anything like that. So uh, yeah, we're going to use this little plastic toy for our demonstrations here. Remember, when you are tubbing your axolotl, you want to make sure you're using fresh, clean, dechlorinated water um, or spring water. If you're using your tap, though, make sure you are dechlorinating it. And I like to use Seachem Prime. This is my favorite dechlorinator. Uh, there are other brands you can use. Just make sure you're avoiding anything with aloe or iodine in it. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is a black tea bath. Black tea baths can be used to treat fungal infections. They have mild antibacterial properties in it, as well as the ability to soothe the skin. If you have something like ammonia burns from a cycle crash or anything like that. I personally do a cold tea bath. This is basically where I put the tea bag in the room temperature water and I let it steep for about 30 minutes with the axolotl in the tub. I have no idea why it looks orange in this video. I, I think it's the lighting. It did not look this orange in person. I promise you that. And I do this about two to three times a day, depending on how severe the ailment is. Black tea baths are just a really great alternative to using any types of chemicals for an axolotl. They are very sensitive and do absorb a lot of things through their skin. So I just personally like doing tea baths. Indian almond leaves are also extremely similar to doing a tea bath. These just put tannins into your water and they can be left in there overnight and change out between water changes. Uh, they do have mild antibacterial, antifungal, and they help soothe the skin for ammonia burns. I really love using these and these are normally my go-to. The next product I want to talk about is methylene blue. I love methylene blue. It is really good to treat fungal infections with, but keep in mind this shit stains literally everything and I'm going to show you. Um, I'm just putting one drop on my hand and I'm going to rub it around a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands with soap and water and you will see it stains my finger and it stains my palm. So just keep that in mind. Wear gloves and do not use Tupperware that you care about or use a glass container. Um, all you need to do is put a little bit in the water, just enough to turn it slightly blue. I actually think I only need to put one drop in this tub and I put two because it is a little bit darker than it needs to be. As far as how long to leave them in the meth blue dip, this is varying opinions. This is why I always say you should cross-reference. Some people say you can leave them in there overnight. I personally do it very similar to the tea baths where I'll leave them in for 30 minutes to an hour and I'll do it twice a day. Uh, keep in mind, this is going to stain the fungus on your axolotl blue as well. So um, yeah, everything will be blue. Your entire life will be blue, da ba dee da ba die. That's all I'm saying. Moving on to our next course of treatment, we have Furon 2, Furan 2, however you want to say it. This is one packet for every 10 gallons of water, but make sure you are reading the instructions and you are measuring out depending on the amount of water you have in your tub. Um, I, I don't really know how much this holds, so I do as I say, not as I do. I kind of just eyeball it and, and, and dump some in, and it does turn the water yellow. You do leave them in this overnight, and that is perfectly fine. It is a 24-hour treatment, and you'll just add new Furan 2 every time you do a water change, a 100% water change, might I add. I would not recommend adding this to your aquarium at all. You want to do this in a tub. 
The next thing I want to touch base on is aquarium salt, doing salt baths. I personally do not like salt baths. I do not use them. I, I, I have aquarium salt on hand just in case. And if I do treat with salt, it's normally just a couple of grains of the, the rock salt that comes in that salt thing um, in the water. I don't, I don't really like using it. I think it's too harsh on the skin, especially if you are having slime coat issues or any type of open wounds on your axolotls. Other breeders, other hobbyists will disagree with me. This is just my opinion. Again, cross-reference, figure out what works best for you. And the last thing I want to talk about here on this video, because this is a lot of people's go-to go for pretty much any ailment, is fridging your axolotl. Do not do this. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is putting your axolotl in the refrigerator and letting them sit there. And this is a bad idea. You shouldn't be doing this. Just no. Firstly, you do not want the temperature of your axolotl's water to get below 45 degrees, and most refrigerators run between about 35 and 40. On top of that, it is far too common for temperatures to not be correct. I mean, how many times have you put stuff on the top shelf and it's frozen the next day? So what you should do instead, because lowering the water temperature is really good to treat constipation um, and slow down their metabolism, is to go ahead and get an ice pack, or in this case, frozen mango chunks, and go ahead and put that under the tub and put a thermometer in there to make sure that you are keeping track of the temperature of your water and it does not get below 45 degrees. Now, in my opinion, none of these treatments should be used for longer than a week to 10 days. And if you do not see improvement, I would definitely reach out to your breeder or reach out to your exotic vet. Once your treatment is over, you can go ahead and return them back to their tub or their tank. It's the tank. Mine are in tubs right now because I just moved and redoing the house. Anyway, now we know why my palm is stained blue, um, and I hope this video has been helpful for you. Again, disclaimer, if your axolotl is extremely sick, you do need to go see a vet. Please go see a vet. Find a vet near you that can treat them. Um, a lot of the times, bacterial infections cannot be treated at home and do need to be treated by an actual exotic vet. I also want you guys to remember to look at multiple resources. Just watching my videos and how I do something is not the best idea. You want to go ahead and cross-reference. This is how I do things. It might not work for, for you or for your animal, and that's okay. So make sure you're going ahead and you're researching from multiple resources to make sure you are making the correct decision. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to hang out with me more, I do have a TikTok. I go live on Twitch every single week, and you can find more information on Instagram. All of that is linked down below, and I'll see you guys next time.